Hello everyone, welcome to soundproofguide.com. In this video, I'll be talking about STC ratings and what does it even mean? Because when talking about soundproofing, as far as soundproofing doors, walls, basically anything, we talk about the STC ratings of different products. A lot of companies already has the STC rating on whatever material that they're selling, so you don't really have to go and try to figure out what the STC rating is. It is important to know the STC rating of the room and also the soundproofing material that you're going to be using because that will determine what you should use to soundproof a wall, whether you're going to be soundproofing the wall for a meter room or you're just going to be soundproofing a wall because you just want it to make it a little bit more quiet from the outside. So one important thing to consider is that the STC rating is only a partial measurement into the soundproofing in the real world because it doesn't really take into account the lower frequency base of sound. So that presents a challenge because a lot of the sound that annoys people and that we want to get rid of is from that lower base frequency. So that is one thing to consider when thinking about measuring the STC rating of, let's say, a wall, door, or window. But first, what does STC rating even mean and what does it stand for? Well, STC rating means sound transmission class rating. This first popped up in the 1960s as more and more people were looking to reduce sound transmission as much as possible between rooms at home, businesses, and more. This provided a uniform way to compare different types of materials as easy as possible. This basically measures the amounts of decibels that it will reduce in a room that you're trying to soundproof. STC ratings are pretty much the only way to compare and contrast different products out there accurately. Since every product uses the same number of scale, it will allow people to determine the exact impact as much as possible. So let's break it down in a way that a typical family would hear different types of noise coming through the wall. So let's say that the wall had an STC rating of 25 is the average level of speech is completely understood. If the wall has an STC rating of 30, loud talking can be heard and understood. 35, loud talking can be heard but not understood. 40, loud talking is faintly heard but not understood. 45, loud talking is barely heard only if a person is listening for it. 50, only the loudest sounds are faintly heard. And 60 plus, the majority of sounds will not be audible at all. So how would you determine the STC rating of a wall, drywall, and windows? So to measure the STC rating of the wall, it's quite simple. All you need is a decibel measuring device, so a decibel meter. Now, if you don't have something like this, you can simply just use your iPhone or your Android phone and download a decibel meter app. Now, these of course are not as accurate, but at least it will get you started in kind of finding out this might seem a little difficult to do, but as long as you have somewhat of an idea on how the ratings work, it's pretty straightforward. For the most accurate reading, take the measurements right up against the wall. The next step is to go in the other room and measure on the other side of the wall. Make sure that the sound remains the same frequency and stays in the same place. Simply subtract the second number from the first number to get the transmission loss. Just a quick pause, if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you have any soundproofing questions, leave me a comment and I will answer all of your questions. Thank you very much. It's pretty common knowledge that no two walls will be exactly the same if it's soundproofed or kind of soundproof. Obviously, a very thin wall will have a very low STC rating. Whereas a thicker drywall, let's say a 5 8 inch drywall, will have a higher STC rating. And of course, as you add different types of materials, the STC rating will go up. This, however, gets a little bit tricky if you're trying to determine the exact STC rating because, of course, most walls will be the same thickness but will have different types of materials added to it 
or will the wall will just be made of different materials because you can buy some walls with soundproofing properties whereas some it's just a very thin cheap wall with low SDC rating so if that's the case you'll have a little bit more work ahead of you because sometimes a very high STC wall doesn't really perform well because most of the sound is low frequency and it still goes through. So in the real world, a very high STC wall doesn't mean that it will actually be a good solution for you. So there is a lot to consider when soundproofing whatever you want to soundproof. So don't just rely on the STC rating, but it is a good basis to go on when trying to figure out what type of soundproofing material you want to use because it's not only about the material, it's also about the technique of soundproofing. So there is a lot of things to consider. And of course, there is one thing that most people never think about, most builders don't do when building a wall and for you, a DIY wall soundproofing. There's one thing that most people forget to do that will basically make the soundproofing project not that great. This video right here, click on it and it will tell you what to do. But really, for good soundproofing results every time, you have to stick with what's simple what is economical and what is actually something that you can do the DIY way, which is decoupling the wall, whereas you add resilient channel and you decouple the wall having an air gap between the two layers of let's say drywall. And that air gap is good in terms of soundproofing. And of course, adding a dampening compound like a noise proofing compound in between let's say two layers of drywall now you don't have to go and buy expensive soundproofing drywall something that of course they've added something in the drywall to make it more soundproof but it doesn't really mean that it works a lot better compared to what you're actually paying for so what you should really be looking at first and foremost is five eight inch drywall most houses these days have been using the half inch drywall, which half inch drywall will not do great in terms of soundproofing. So by adding five inch drywalls, you're well on your way to soundproof your wall. Measuring the STC rating of drywall, you have to look at the specifics while doing that. And one thing to do is to note, does that wall already have something like a resilient channel or do you have to add one? Is the wall made of concrete, drywall or something else? What is the spacing like with the studs and what are they made of? Only people that know the specifics can then go out and actually pick the right soundproofing material for what you want to soundproof the wall for and how to do it right that it actually works in terms of soundproofing the type of noise that you want to get rid of. In some cases, there might be limited options that actually work. In other cases, there's very little soundproofing that has been done. Now that can actually be a good thing for some people because then you start everything from scratch and you can choose what type of material to go by. So what changes the STC rating of a wall? So when the examining process is underway, there are three important factors to keep in mind when measuring the STC rating of a wall. So number one is wall material, the second one is vulnerable area, and the third one is frequency. You might be a little bit satisfied with results after doing some soundproofing based on STC ratings. Keep in mind that real life performance is usually a little worse than what STC ratings tend to suggest. This mostly has to do with the fact that an STC rating are measured in a lab. Everything is controlled as much as possible in this scenario, but in a real world test, people are not going to have everything nearly as perfect. It is usually not a big difference, so most people should be fine using the STC rating as a solid base. It is however recommended to soundproof a little more than the suggested amount to factor in any deficiencies once real world measurements are examined. Feel free to take a look at many of our other YouTube videos and also some of our articles on our website soundproofguide.com. 
Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed this video and also consider subscribing to our channel if you like our content. Also feel free to leave us a comment below if you have any soundproofing questions of your own. We will certainly try our very best to help you. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video or any other videos in our channel. Thank you very much.